we're going to jump right in with our guest speaker, Amara Dolan here, co-founder of Left of Center, is on board to speak for us at this time. And we'll let her jump on the, uh, the program right now. Amara, are you out there? I am here. Thank you so you? much for having me. Welcome. You're looking up. I must be on the ceiling. <laughs> You're very high above us. No, I'm I'm I've been walking on air since the election, so it's it's a perfect metaphor. Um, hi, everybody. Thank you so much for having me. I'm Mara Dolan. I'm the Democratic State Committee women woman for the third Middlesex district, um, and I am co-founder of Left of Center. Uh, this is a, a super PAC that works to help elect Democrats across the country in congressional races to help hold the center and strengthen our democracy. And so we could not be more pleased with the results of the last election. So I know you've asked me to talk about both what happened nationally and what happened at the state level. So I just want to start off by saying that basically, I think what we saw on the national level is thanks to all the incredibly hard work of folks like you, and it really is stunning how many activists sacrificed so much of their time, gave so much energy, made such a commitment to making sure that we got out the vote to Democrats, that we really have become a great blue wall. And uh, this was a great blue wall that MAGA could not tear down. So it just, it gives me extraordinary confidence in our country and in election security across the nation. And so it's just, I was up till 1.30, you know, I thought I'd be like, you know, not not thrilled with the results and I'd go to bed and just, you know, get a good night's sleep. But it was good news after good news after good news after good news. Now I did know a couple of things going in. So I felt I felt better than I know a lot of folks felt. I mean, I did know uh, that the Republicans had been flooding the polling, flooding polling aggregators like Real Clear Politics and 538, so that what they were predicting was not accurate uh, because they were getting Republican polls that were that were skewed in favor of Republican candidates. But I think the, the really significant breakaway information from this race comes from John Della Volpe, who's actually from Massachusetts, who's at the Harvard uh, Institute of Politics. And he's done an extraordinary work with young voters and getting data on young voters. And listen to these numbers. For voters under 30, they're 63% Democrat and about 35% Republican. And they voted in higher numbers than we've ever seen before in a midterm. So that bodes really well for what's going to happen moving forward. These are folks who know how to get to the polls and they get to the polls. In 18 to 29 voters, they favor Democrats by 28 points. It's a huge advantage. 30 to 44, Democrats are up by two. Now you get to my group, 45 to 64. I don't know what's wrong with us because we're, we're favoring Republicans by 11 points. And when you go to 65 and over, Republicans are favored by 13 points. So it's real, there really is a generational divide um, that begins at about the age of 45. But fortunately, um, and I, I'm very grateful to Gen Z um, and to millennials, but we also have to remember that the people who raised them and the teachers who taught them, they obviously have done something very, very right. And it looks as if what was really driving the youth vote was the fact that Biden had delivered on issues that were really critical to them. Student debt relief, decriminalizing cannabis convictions, uh, decriminalizing cannabis and um, amnesty for people convicted of cannabis related crimes, also, climate legislation. We passed the best climate legislation in the history of this country. And also, Roe, that folks are really concerned that, yet, well, I think that's, I don't, I don't think that's limited to, to younger folks, but it was certainly one of the things that motivated them to get to the polls. Their turnout was so high that voters 30 and under wiped out the Republican advantage that they held among voters 65 and over. So it's, it's, it's huge. It really is huge. Early voting generally was up 8 to 10% over 2018. And early voting helped us tremendously. We knew going into election day 
that we had a 4.3 million vote firewall. So we knew we were strong going in and we're hearing all of these, you know, 538 and real clear politics were telling us that we were going to lose and there was going to be a red wave, but the early voting data, hard data that we had showed that that was probably not going to be the case. Going into the election um, in, 20, in 2018, Democrats had a one point advantage. In 2022, we had a seven point advantage. I am unabashedly enthusiastic and supportive of President Biden. I think he's doing an absolutely phenomenal job. He knows how to win. Let's look, look at everything that he's done. Look at everything that he's accomplished domestically and foreign policy. Joe Biden knows how to win and he knows how to deliver. So I want anyone out there who feels shy about supporting Joe Biden because a lot of people like to beat up on him. You know, don't be because he's, he really has done a phenomenal job. So moving on to the statewide, again, what an incredible night, absolutely historic, electing so many women to constitutional offices. The only male constitutional officer outside of the governor's council is Secretary of State Bill Galvin. All the rest are women. I mean, it's just, as a woman, it's really, it's, it's really extraordinary to see. Um, but one of the reasons that happened is because Republicans are just, disarray. Our state Republican Party is, is just a catastrophe. Um, and we, you know, we're lucky. We're lucky that they're as weak and disorganized and badly led as they are, because I don't think I need to tell uh, folks in your part of the state that Somerville and Cambridge does not represent everyone across Massachusetts. In fact, there was a poll done a few years ago um, on describing what they called the vanguard left. These are people who identified with commonly recognized farther left policy priorities like the Green New Deal, that's become mainstream now, um, single payer health care. But the percentage of Democrats who support those policies was 20%, 20%. So when you look at um, our long-term prospects in the state in maintaining this extraordinary uh, results that we just got last week, we've got to keep in mind that there are a lot of folks in, in Massachusetts who aren't Democrats, Big, you know, they're very purple and even red to the state. And even within the Democrats, there's a smaller percentage who we would identify as the vanguard left than a lot of people think there are. Now, I do think that at the local level, um, one of the things that we need to do within our own town committees is make sure that we connect with some of the other groups who are doing great work. I was just on a statewide call for Indivisible Massachusetts. They do incredible work. Our revolution, Mass, Mass Alliance. When I talk to folks in those groups, I get the impression that they think that if they walk into a local Democratic town committee meeting, they're not going to find like-minded people. I don't think it's true. You know, and I've said to them, you go into those groups and these are people who support single payer healthcare too. And they support the Green New Deal. So I just, I really, I urge everybody in their local town committees to reach out to those other groups so that we can at least be on each other's radar. We can get to know each other better because unity is key. Um, in terms of our policy, I think that we are much more alike than we are different within the Democratic Party. So I want us to sort of get beyond that and start communicating more with each other and hopefully bring more people into our Democratic Town Committee meetings.
So that's basically the gist of what I wanted to say. I'm happy to answer questions if you have time for questions and answers, or I'm, I can be done now. If that's what works for you. Hold on one second. We do have a couple of questions, I believe. Hold on, please. Okay. Hi. Thank you, um, Mar. And, and could you repeat, or uh, I didn't quite hear some of the names of the groups that you're asking us to reach out to so we're clear? Yes, thank you. Um, Indivisible Massachusetts. Uh, they, they do extraordinary work. They're very well organized. Uh, they do work on local and also elections nationwide. I was texting with Indivisible on election day. They, they connect with other groups uh, very, very well. Our Revolution, which is the group that was started by Bernie Sanders supporters, Our Revolution Massachusetts, very well organized. I, and I would love to get us connected with them. Also Progressive Mass which endorsed a whole bunch of candidates this election. Uh, they're working on reforms at the state level. They do very, very good work. And Mass Alliance, which is another organization that works to elect more progressive Democrats. Thank you. Thanks. I think if we, if we even just let those folks know when we're having meetings so that their members in our towns will know, hey, there's a Mansfield Democratic Town Committee meeting tonight, and maybe they might want to be a part of it. I think that would be really good. And if they can, and then we can let them know that we are interested in what they do too. It will be good for them to know that we care about what they're doing and we want to hear what they're doing. It'll go a long way. Hi, Mara. Joe Kaplan here. Hey, good Joe. Good to see you. How good are to you? see you. Thank you so much good for inviting me. Well, thank you for what you said tonight. You obviously gave this a lot of thought. And, and really, it's, it's very interesting and helpful to us. And I'd like to say, too, I like what you talked about with the young people. And, and I'm optimistic because I don't think it's an age thing. I, I think it's generational. I think the mindset that they have, being pro-diversity, concerned about the climate, et cetera, I, I think that's going to stay. I don't think they're going to drift right wood as agree. they get older. So I guess I'm just expanding upon what you said. I think it's, I think it's a very, very good sign. Um, yep. I think Thank we have, you. and I think you're right about reaching out to all factions, really. Try to bring everyone under the same umbrella, even if there are differences. And I think, too, we have to keep on going. I think the future looks much brighter than it did last week, <laughs> you know? I mean, there's some real encouraging signs out there, but we never know what's going to happen. So we have to keep organizing and working. You know, I was thinking tonight about how Vietnam War not only divided the country, but probably the Democratic Party more than any uh, American institution, really. It took 30 plus years for us to get over those divisions. God forbid, you know, Ukraine becomes a bloodbath and, and the body bags start coming home. That could be something I see as, as very divisive to the Democratic Party. So I'm not necessarily predicting that. Yeah. And, but, but I think we have to be aware that there are so many things that can change that, you know, we were so glum and ready to give up on everything just a week ago. But now we have to make sure we still have to keep fighting for our gains and keep making more gains. Yeah, I mean, we're in a position where we can actually have conversations about how to make things better, not just about how to stop evil people from destroying this country. It's a huge, it's a huge shift in a short period. And it's, it's just, it's just extraordinary. And, and I just want to give a shout out to the IBEW because the local 103 endorsed me in my race for governor's council. And I, I, I just love, I just love the IBEW. And not that we should give up on calling them evil, but um, your point's well taken. I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, I've gotten to a point where, you know, I'm a grandmother. I don't have time to mess around. I want to call things as I see them. And that's what I see. I see people doing things that are truly evil and they, they've got to be stopped. Election, election, a lot of those evil people. 
and, and force them out of office. So we're getting there. It's going to be a long process to get them all out, but we are improving. I'm delighted sure. with the results of this election. So thank you. Sure Is there are. anyone thank online you. who has any questions? Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to get a picture before I go. <laughs> Got to do the social media. Thank you so much for having me. Keep up the good work, everybody. Take care. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.